watching this video. You can help support our channel by hitting that subscribe button. You can also visit our website, gigglebox.tv, to stay up to date with all our videos and cool merchandise. Enjoy the video. Bye. This is the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. There once lived an Emperor who loved new clothes more than anything else in the world. He had a different outfit for every day of the week and two different ones for Sundays. His servants travelled the world in search of the finest cloth and his tailors were busy day and night. When the Emperor walked through the palace, his ministers and attendants bowed and said, Your Majesty is looking so elegant today. They would praise the beauty of his velvet cloak or the cut of his satin breeches. Sometimes they didn't mean it, but that didn't matter. The Emperor loved it when people admired his fine clothes and they all wanted to please him. One day, two men arrived at the palace carrying a large bag. We are Simon and Tobias. We are weavers and tailors. We have brought some of our finest, most wondrous cloth and we would like to show it to the Emperor. We know it will delight him. Now Simon and Tobias were neither weavers nor tailors. They were scoundrels who had come up with a plan to trick the Emperor out of a lot of money. But no one at the palace knew that. So the two men were shown into the Emperor's chambers. Your Majesty said Simon. We have heard how much you love elegant clothes, so we have come to show you something very special. In this bag, said Tobias, is a truly magnificent fabric, which we have woven ourselves. This cloth is woven from thread so light and delicate that it feels almost as if it isn't there. In fact, this cloth has a very unusual quality, something no other fabric on earth has. Oh, said the Emperor eagerly. And what is that? This cloth can only be seen by respected, wise and capable people. To silly fools and to people who are unfit for their jobs, it is completely invisible. The Emperor was fascinated. With clothes made from this cloth, he thought, I will be able to see which of my ministers are wise and which are fools. To Simon and Tobias, he said, Show me this cloth at once. Simon reached into the bag and pulled out nothing. He held his arms out to the Emperor. Can you see the beautiful colours? The way the fabric falls gently into graceful folds? Surely this is cloth worthy of a great Emperor. Of course the Emperor couldn't see anything because there was nothing there. But he didn't want the weavers to think he was a silly fool who shouldn't be Emperor, so he said, Yes, of course. As you say, it's exquisite. May we begin weaving more cloth and making a new outfit for you? Oh, yes. Please start at once. We will need payment in advance, of course. Certainly, said the Emperor. He ordered his treasurer to give them a purse filled with gold coins. A workshop was set up, and when everything was ready, Simon and Tobias started work. They looked very busy. But of course, they were only pretending. There was nothing at all in their looms. The next day, the Emperor sent his chief minister to see how the pair were getting on. Now, everyone in the kingdom knew about the clothes' magical qualities. So when the chief minister came to the workshop, he was alarmed. Good grief. I can't see anything at all. But he didn't want to appear foolish. So he watched the weavers for a while nodding his head in approval. You are doing excellent work. <laughs> I am sure the Emperor will be pleased. Thank you, said Tobias. Tomorrow we will be ready to measure the Emperor for his new clothes. Of course, we will need money for needles and thread. Yes, certainly. I will have the treasurer send you more gold at once. As soon as he left, Simon and Tobias burst out <laughs> laughing and shook each other's hands. What clever rascals we are! The cleverest! And they went back to their empty looms. The next morning, Simon measured the Emperor from head to foot, calling out numbers to Tobias, who wrote them down in a little notebook. 
You will look splendid in your new clothes. Simon assured the emperor. Why not arrange a royal procession so that everyone in the kingdom will see what a fine figure of a man you are? A wonderful idea. Simon and Tobias scurried off to their workshop, where once again, they pretended to be very busy. Simon pretended to cut the cloth, and Tobias sat sewing the air with a fine needle and no thread. Two days later, the emperor visited the workshop. Perhaps now that the clothes were actually being made, he would be able to see them. We have finished the breeches, said Tobias, pretending to hold them up. What does your majesty think? Of course, the emperor could see nothing, but he did not dare give himself away. They are splendid. I cannot wait to wear them in the procession. Would you like to try them on? Uh, well, yes, of course. He took off his breeches and Tobias and Simon helped him step into the invisible ones. The two men walked around the emperor, pretending to admire their work. A perfect fit. Look at how straight the seams are. How beautifully the fabric drapes. Yes, the emperor agreed, smiling nervously. This is the finest work I have ever seen. When do you think you will be finished? Working with this delicate cloth takes time. We have to be extremely careful with such fine material. If we had a bit more money, we would be able to buy even finer needles and thread than we have been using. Certainly. I will have the treasurer send you more gold at once. He quickly changed into his own breeches and left, hoping the two men did not think he was a silly fool who was not fit to be emperor. As soon as he was gone, Simon and Tobias once again <laughs> laughed and shook each other's hand. We are the cleverest rascals in the world! <laughs> At last, Simon and Tobias announced that the emperor's new clothes were finished. The royal procession was arranged for the very next day. The next morning, Simon and Tobias were taken into the royal dressing room where the emperor was waiting in his underwear. Here is your new outfit, your majesty, said Simon, pretending to hold out the clothes. It is the finest we have ever made. But the emperor could not see any clothes. Now he knew for sure that he must be a silly fool, not fit to be emperor. I must keep this a secret to myself, he thought. Then he said, The outfit is truly magnificent. I cannot wait to show it off. Simon and Tobias helped the emperor into his new clothes. First the breeches, next the tunic. As they continued, naming each piece of clothing until the emperor was fully dressed. The emperor stood before the mirror, turning one way and then another way, pretending to admire himself. Extraordinary. The most beautiful clothes I've ever had the pleasure to wear. Thank you, gentlemen. Then, with Simon and Tobias pretending to carry the train of his cloak, he made his way through the palace. As he passed, his courtiers and ministers bowed and whispered words of admiration to one another. They followed him out of the palace and the royal procession began. The streets were lined with people. Everyone in the city had come to see the emperor in his new clothes. People cheered and clapped and there were cries of Splendid! Magnificent! Such glorious colours! Such fine stitching! But one little boy, standing with his mother, just pointed and laughed. The Emperor's in his underwear. He hasn't got any clothes on. Oh, what? Bellowed a man standing nearby. Everyone fell silent. The Emperor has no clothes on, the boy said. A murmur ran through the crowd. Then one person repeated what the boy had said, and then another, and soon everyone was saying it over and over. The Emperor has no clothes on! The Emperor has no clothes on! And the Emperor, wearing nothing but his underwear and his crown, knew they were right. But he marched on, holding his head high. By the time the procession was over, Simon and Tobias had fled, never to be seen again. But the Emperor had learned an important lesson. If I had not been such a show-off with my clothes, I would never have let those scoundrels trick me. I was trying not to look like a fool, 
but I behave like the biggest fool of all. Things will be different from now on. Things were different, and the Emperor, now much wiser than before, lived happily ever after. The end. Remember to please like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated on all our new videos.